Mike Wright here and I'm back this time to answer a question that I have seen on various forums online. In fact, I saw this in a group on Facebook recently and the answers that I saw, the misinformation being spread, well, it made my blood boil. I, I just don't get it, guys. You know, I understand it's the internet and everybody can be an expert, but if you don't know the answer to something, maybe just don't answer. Maybe just listen and, and learn a little bit. So the question that somebody asked was, what are the what is the point in fanned frets? If somebody could explain what fanned frets are for to me in syllables of less than five words, words with less than five syllables, I would appreciate that. And I saw all manner of answers. Oh, well, uh, fanned frets were designed because they help with the ergonomic playing of the instrument. They're better designed for the way your hand fits on the instrument. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, well, fan frets, what they what they do is they help with uh, with intonation. They improve your overall intonation. Bullshit. <laughs> this isn't true, guys. This isn't the case. It's a very simple answer, a very obvious answer. And to demonstrate this, I have a couple of guitars with me. I'm first holding my Vigier. Uh, this is a six string, of course. Uh, my main number one tread axe. Love this guitar. This is kind of standard scale length. It's actually a little bit longer. It's 25.6 inch rather than 25.5. Um, but in essence, we're talking standard scale length. Now, for comparison, what you need to understand is string tension relies on the length which the string is being uh, stretched over. So if you think about, for example, a mandolin versus a bass guitar, a mandolin has a very, very short neck, and a bass guitar has a very, very long neck. Now, it's no coincidence that the bass guitar is tuned very low and a mandolin is tuned very high. In essence, when we have a short scale length, it enables us to tune a string higher without having to um, have a, a thin, an incredibly thin string on there. So, it, it, and it works in, in reverse, of course on a bass guitar, very long scale length, and the notes can maintain the tension that you would like them to have when you hit the strings without having to have these, you know, massive strings that are so thick they resemble fence posts. So if you take a standard guitar and try and tune it down, what you will obviously find is the lower you go, the slacker that string is. Now this is currently, I've got this tuned down for bit to B for the recording that I've, I've done for this. And this string is very slack. That obviously has lots of drawbacks. It means that when I pick hard, the string goes sharp and then releases. Uh, any bends, you can, you can really bend that note a lot further than you would uh, normally like to. Your vibrato is different. Just in general, the guitar doesn't hold its tuning as well. And to be completely honest, I'm not gonna say it sounds worse, it sounds different and it's generally speaking not a more desirable tone. So we have this scale length for standard tuned guitars because this is what kind of suits this instrument. Now I was going to bring out my Fender, I have a baritone, Now, when you think of uh, a baritone, a baritone scale length is longer. I actually forget what the scale length on my baritone is, it's probably 28 inches. Now on that, the low string on that is tuned to B and when you hit that it sounds nice and in tune. But if I click my fingers now, what I'm gonna pick up is another guitar that has fanned frets on it. I'm gonna to talk to you about that. So in three, two, one, and there we have it. So this is an Ormsby Hype machine. This uh, belongs to Mike McLaughlin of Party Cannon, fellow Guitar Souls podcast host. And as you can see, the frets on this are fanned. So they're not, they're not straight. The bridge angles this way, the nut angles, this way. Now what does this do? What is the consequence of this? Well, this now has a compound scale length. The scale length is longer on the bottom string than it is on the higher string. And as you go down this, uh, I've actually, I didn't, I didn't check this with Mike. I think he said that this was a 27.5 inch scale length on his lowest string. And the top string is standard scale length. So 25.5. I could be totally wrong on that. It's not, it's not really the point. It's not about the details of this particular instrument, although this is a very cool instrument. It's just now we're looking at an instrument that has that, the, the kind of best of both worlds. On this guitar, the strings on this aren't too thick, but this guitar, Mike keeps tuned in, uh, in B standard. So that's B, E, A, D, G, F sharp, and B, I believe. Uh, for Party Cannon, so it's his low tuned guitar, and the beauty of having a string well, it's not, as I said, not too thick, but over this uh, scale length is you can hit this pretty hard 
and it responds in the same way that hitting a standard tune guitar on a standard uh, scale length neck would work. It doesn't sound sloppy, it doesn't sound too low, and uh, it doesn't go out of tune when you hit it hard. It's it's nice, it feels good. Now, of, of course, it would be completely possible to have a baritone scale length, but this guitar has, as I say, the best of both worlds. Because we have the standard scale length on the top, when it comes to moving on to these higher strings, these still feel slack. And I can still do all of my high tech bending all of these really big bends feel completely normal on this instrument because the scale length isn't ridiculous. When I try and do similar bends on my baritone or on my uh, my Mayonnaise 8 string, which has a 27, maybe 28 inch, 27 inch scale length, bending on that feels different. It feels harder. The, the instrument doesn't feel as responsive. So the idea here is that this is a nice compromise of the two. Now, in complete honesty, uh, applying these fan frets to a six string is it's a very specialist thing. It works wonderfully for Mike, but it's not really the kind of thing that I feel is uh, overly necessary, necessary for anything that I play on. Uh, but for something like a seven string guitar, where traditionally when you have a, a six string and you add a low seventh string on it, I've always found that that low B string sounds a little bit not quite there. It sounds a bit flappy. And of course you can compensate for that by putting a thicker string on the low end, but when you do that, the string starts to sound different. It sounds thicker, and that's not necessarily the tone that I'm looking to achieve if I play on a seven string. You take it to an eight string, it's the same principle. A low F sharp on an eight string, generally speaking, it's not for me. But if you have fanned frets with a long scale length on the bottom and a short scale length on the top, you get that nice compromise. So, if you are into fan fret, fret instruments, of course, Ormsby makes some fabulous instruments. There are tons of fan fret uh, instruments on the market right now. Ibanez are hitting it big on the fan fret thing. Um, of course, you can buy uh, Mayanez fan fret. Honestly, if you shop around, you'd be surprised at the amount of manufacturers that offer fan fret instruments now for the extended range, guys. There's one more guitar that I just want to pick up. Uh, I'll do the finger click thing and the magic of editing, and I'll talk to you about that one. So, here we go. There we go. So this uh, is my Dingwall Combustion Bass. I absolutely love this instrument and I used this to track the uh, bass guitar on the Hellcat Molly album. Now initially Vigier had sent me a, uh, was it a, a passion? An apogee? Passion? It was a passion, I'm sure it was a passion. Uh, passion five string bass. And it was great, it sounded fantastic. It had lovely pickups and electronics in it and I tracked everything with it and then I managed to buy one of these for myself and I got a great price on it. Now, as you can see, this is a five string with the fanned frets. And the moment I got this instrument and I hit that low B string, I had this sudden realization that I need to retrack all of the bass guitar on my album because the tension on this low B string is just incredible compared to what I was getting on the uh, standard four string that I had. Uh, sorry, standard length, standard scale length five string that I had. So in essence, this is perfect for my bass guitar needs. A standard scale length, five string, that low end just doesn't cut it. Whereas this, you can really hit it and it really kind of works wonderfully. And of course, this this is the, the sort of instrument that Nolly from Periphery is playing. His um, signature NG2, NG2 is an awesome bass and uses all of these features again. And that helps with that low end. You know, there's a reason. We don't play instruments like this because they look clever. We don't do it because it helps with our intonation. It does shit all for your intonation. Um, I'm not gonna say it's uncomfortable, uh, or that it's more comfortable, you'd be surprised how quickly you adapt to it. It's not a major, major change. But anyway, so what I'm getting at is the instruments sound different. So in order to test this, what I've done is I've written just a, a very short little musical idea, just playing, uh, I have my Vigier and Mike's Ormsby, both tuned to drop B. Now I've kept Mike's uh, Ormsby exactly as he uses it, and it sounds very tight on that low end. Whereas my guitar, I've kept my standard 10 gauge strings on there and just tuned them down. Now we know that that's gonna result in slacker strings. It doesn't help with the tuning, the notes aren't quite as stable. Uh, you listen to it and let me know what you think because I'm really interested to know what your thoughts are.
So I'm not going to force any conclusions on you on that one. It really is down to you to check those two clips out again and see which one you prefer. That's ultimately what this comes down to. As musicians, as composers, as creators, it is our goal to paint the picture that we want to paint. And some people will prefer that longer scale length and the tight bottom that that gives you. Some people prefer to play a standard scale length guitar, tune it down and leave the strings as they are, and it gives you a more percussive kind of, I'm gonna use the word, the word sloppy, but not in a negative way. It gives you a, a different sound, a more rough around the edges sound. And it's totally acceptable. It really is a case of what you prefer. So as I say, I'm very interested to know what you prefer. Um, share your thoughts in the comments below. But most importantly, let's not spread any more misinformation, guys. I've explained it. There is no reason for anyone to get this wrong again in future. Just point them in the direction of this video. So lastly, I would like to extend a huge debt of gratitude to these guys over here. These guys are my patrons over on patreon.com. They all support me at various tiers and they help to keep this channel going. This video is in essence brought to you by these awesome people. So huge thank you to those guys. If you would like to be like these guys, you can do so by checking me out on Patreon for as little as $1. Get some cool stuff like access to my private patron-only Facebook group. Check us out by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this little button down here. And there's two more videos here and here. Remember, guys, playing music, making music, it's all about experience and it's all about expressing yourself. There's nothing concrete here. It's all about what you prefer the sound of. But at least now you understand it. Peace out and I'll see you again soon. Bye.